Greetings YouTubers and welcome to the Gearbench. As many of you are aware, parts of the Hiker food chart are becoming outdated. Apparently, some manufacturers like to tinker with their food labels. And thanks to everyone that's pointed out discrepancies, I have been keeping notes. So what started out as spot correcting those updates turned into a mini overhaul. In the future, I won't do a video every time, just know that these foods do change. So if you spot something, drop a comment. Periodically, I'll just push out stealth updates when I can. In this video, I'll just highlight some of the significant changes. But also, many of you have commented with new suggestions, stuff that wasn't on the list that is noteworthy. And I've kept track of those suggestions as well. So I'll highlight those and give credit where it's due. The same thing is true for the freeze-dried foods chart, except that didn't just get tweaked. It got completely renovated. And no need to go line by line and all that, but I'll explain the upgraded data and some new additions. Also, by suggestion, I created a menu planner tool and then added a food combo calculator. And then last, but certainly not least, Jeff Blum has taken the whole thing to a new level by combining the charts and adding novel features. Now, if you're like, just give me the chart and leave me alone, well, the download link is in the description box below, via Concarbs. Otherwise, don't touch that dial. And by the way, if you have no idea what I'm talking about with all this food chart stuff, I did a series of videos explaining it all in detail. I'll link those below in case you're interested. The chart is now well over a thousand hiker food options. And there's also a series of nutritional analysis columns for everything from calorie density to macronutrient performance settings. And those are the ones that may need some explanation. Okay, onward to the data. Judging by the comments coming in, most of the attention centers around the lighter foods, and unfortunately some of those I featured previously have had their calories reduced for the same serving size, and that obviously lowers the density. Looking at the old top 30 bars by calories per ounce, the ultralight rated umchu bars have lost 30 calories each, and that drops them to very light status, closer to what kind bars used to be. And I say used to be because kind bars have also had their calories nerfed. Whereas previously they were mostly very light, now only three flavors remain in that rank. The rest are now either lightweight or moderate. I went ahead and checked the cliff bars too, but there were only minor changes there. Uh, others expressed disappointment that one of their favorites, Pro Bars, didn't rank higher in density than they did. And on the one hand, I've always said to eat what you like. This data is a tool, not a rule. Realizing that food label changes aren't that uncommon, I reviewed the Pro Bars collection. So in addition to adding more flavors, they were the first I discovered to actually have their calories increased. They didn't change them a lot, but there are now nine flavors rated lightweight. Also, I should point out that when I first made the chart, it was just a list for calorie density. Over time, it evolved into more than that, with the nutritional columns coming on one at a time. And some people have reacted negatively to what they perceive as an undue obsession with ultralight food. Well, the whole point of including the nutritional data and the analysis columns alongside the density is to facilitate people striking their own balance between performance and weight. A pro bar that's only lightweight, but has an optimum fuel ratio, might be worth more to some than an ultralight option with heavily imbalanced macros. And as I've said, it's entirely up to you. Looking around at some of the other options that used to appear in the top 30, I found that Power Crunch bars not only added flavors, but they're another example of a density increase. Where they used to top out at very light, there are now 11 options in the ultralight shade. And now you can get things like uh, red velvet and lemon meringue in 156 calories per ounce. That's a particularly good density for a protein specific bar. The new Pro Level Power Crunch is the same thing, it's just in a 330 calorie size and with 20 grams of protein instead of 13. You also caught the fact that the old Trapper Beef Sticks got put on a diet. They used to be the top of the meat section, but lost 30 calories per serving, going from very light to only moderate. In exchange though, I found the Alberto Smoked Sausage Sticks got an increase. And they're not only number one now, but they rate as ultralight, which is even better than the old Trapper Sticks used to be. And then for nutrition's sake, I expanded the flavors of cookies by Lenny and Larry. 
True, they're mostly heavy with a few moderates, but look at the carb protein ratios. Every flavor is in the range for optimal fuel. I really like them for day hikes or any other circumstance where weight may not be that critical. They're soft, they taste good, and it's 400 calories and 16 grams of protein that fits flat in your pocket. By showing the various flavors for these, or for any other food, you can really fine-tune your selections. You want the lightest? Get snickerdoodles. Trying to limit sodium? Chocolate chip. It's all just data. As I mentioned though, there's more than just updates to existing items. You all have left comments with lots of really good suggestions of new products to add to the database. So check some of these out. Perfect bars come in a bunch of flavors, most of which are rated very light. They've got a nice amount of protein and the calorie count's a bit more substantial than a lot of the snack-sized bars. Hempy yeah bars are also mostly very light with good protein for their size. And look at these Yes Bars. Well, hello, beautiful. Where have you been? Optimized trail fuel that also happens to be ultra light. And along those lines, Nature Valley's coated wafers are another ultra light optimal fuel option. In the spirit of using the data to learn lessons about how to shop when browsing an unfamiliar selection in a local store, both these Nature Valley options and the Power Crunch bars are in the coated wafer style, so look to those as possibly high density choices in general. Also added, some Nature Valley protein options. And protein bars are almost always heavier than others, but these are still in the very light range. 88 Acres makes bars in several flavors. There's a very light option, but also several in the optimal fuel range. And while I was on their site, I noticed that 88 Acres also makes a series of seed butters. And there's been comments from multiple people lamenting that if you can't eat nuts, you're basically screwed when it comes to density. Well, not necessarily so. I had a few in there already, but if you can still eat seeds, here's five new flavors of nut-free butter that all rank ultra light. They've got three kinds of sunflower butter, one of pumpkin seeds, and another from watermelon seeds. And while I was there, I updated and expanded the Justin's Nut Butters. They raised some calories even higher than they were before. Now all of them rank hyper light. And just a note on accuracy versus changes. Sometimes they legitimately change the nutrition information and therefore update the labels accordingly. Other times, however, the problem may be a disconnect between what the website says and how the label reads on the actual product itself. Case in point, I wanted to try these uh, 88 Acres Seed Butters, so I ordered a sampler pack, and upon receiving them, I noted that the label didn't match the website. In such cases, I used the label. Finishing up with the bars, uh, the Coconut Secret brand almond coconut bars that used to be an ultra light option at number three on the list have apparently been discontinued. But in their place, Coconut Secret now has three flavors of what they call a grain-free granola bar, two of which are ultralight and now hold the number two and number four spots on the list. So poking around for other grain-free granola bars on Amazon led me to the new number one bar, and the first bar ever to rate as hyperlight, Autumn's Gold Grain-Free Granola Bar in Cinnamon and Almond. 170 calories per ounce. That is, until they change it. Anyway, this is what the top 30 bars now look like by density. And the next 30. There were interesting suggestions in a lot of categories. Bone broth comes in convenient packets, makes for a flavorful, savory protein bump. Kind of the way you use onion soup mix when cooking at home to add flavor to your recipes, these broth packets make a nice way to both season your backpacking meals and add 10 grams of protein. And I've already used them in ramen, which I love, but it's a little low on protein for what I want out of a trail dinner. And they do add additional sodium if that's a concern. Remember the electrolytes video, you might actually want that. And for flavor balancing when adding one to ramen, I just increase the amount of water to keep the saltiness roughly the same. And I enjoy drinking the extra hot broth. And I did look around though and I found these Lono Life brand with a low sodium option if you prefer. And I'd never noticed these, but Quaker Instant Oatmeal makes some protein flavors. And like all oatmeals, they're on the heavy side, but check out those ratios. 
If you're making hot breakfast from a base camp, these could be an excellent fuel to start those day hikes. Now I had put in Joiva's Sesame Crunch candies, but I missed their Halva Marble. And here we go again with label mismatches. The Amazon listing included this screenshot. Well, that works out to 194 calories per ounce, and it would put these easily at the top of the list, above all the dark chocolates. <laughs> Naturally, I ordered some immediately. Well, this is the actual label of what arrived. Now, that's still a respectable 150 calories per ounce, but it does drop from ultralight to very light. I just bring it up in case you're checking items and keep finding all these mistakes. And somehow I overlooked peanut butter M&M's, which happened to be the lightest version of them all. And there's a new sheriff in Cookie Town as well. Walker's Vanilla Shortbread aces out Keebler's Sandies for the top spot in the cookie section. And I already mentioned adding the Lenny and Larry's flavors, but I also put in a few more options of Oreos. Turns out the golden cookies have better density than the original chocolate, and the more stuffing the better. So the golden double stuffs end up being the lightest Oreo I could find. And in the drinks section, I realized that I never put an entry in for my own custom recovery mix. So that's there now. Also in adding it and looking at the numbers, I realized its ratio of about 3.4 would go to a near perfect 3.9 with just one additional tablespoon of dextrose. So four instead of three. In the recovery video, I also talked about Mike's and Melissa's mixes, and they weren't in there either for some reason, so they are now. And a couple of other new recovery drinks suggested by you. Endurox R4 makes a perfect 4.0, and Hammer Nutrition has both a regular and a vegan option for those that prefer. And then last, take a gander at the new number one, coconut milk powder. I'm thinking it could be a bump for some of the dried meals, maybe one of the pad thais. A coconut cream sauce, anyone? Or put it in your coffee, as they suggest. And then lastly, we come to sides. Now, I had put in stuff like rice and quinoa and couscous, but I never really entered things like dried beans or peas. So there are now several new options for you to compare. As far as the freeze-dried meals chart goes, that got a complete overhaul. When I built that chart, it was before I got into any of the nutritional analysis, so all it had was the basics for calculating caloric density. Well, Jeff Blum contacted me about adding the rest of the nutrition label data to every meal on the chart. And we split up the job and it's finally done. So now you can check meals for their fat content, sodium levels, carbs, sugar, protein, and more. And that also enables the inclusion of the nutritional analysis columns. So instead of just looking for the lightest weight breakfasts, you can sort by ratio and see which ones might give you the best launch on your day. And in doing all of that, we noticed a large amount of changes. And there were new flavors added, old flavors apparently discontinued, and a lot of packaged calorie counts changed as well. Mountain House, for example, has come out with new packaging, and it's not just cosmetic. They changed their entrees from two and a half servings per pouch to two. So all of those updates have been reflected in the chart. And while we're on Mountain House, they seem to have retired some pouches, but it's not exactly clear how many. This blog post at the Epicenter lists just a few, but there are more that don't currently appear on Mountain House's website. So I'm not sure if they're retired or just currently out of stock. So what I did was put the stuff you can't currently order in red. It's either retired or just not available. Time will tell. But hey, if you're like me and you buy the adventure boxes from Costco for basically half price, you could easily still have some of these flavors left over in your supplies. Similarly, it appears the military may have changed the specs for their long range patrol meals, of which Mountain House was a supplier. And they may just be using the pro packs now. So I put all the LRPs in green. Now I've had multiple inquiries about what to do regarding recovery snacks if you don't follow the eating schedule I laid out as an example in that video. Namely, what would I suggest as a recovery strategy for someone who doesn't stop hiking after dinner? Some people like to keep going for another few hours before making camp for the night. Without making this whole video about that, here's a rough outline of what I would do in that circumstance. First, you don't have to be done for the day to have a recovery drink. 
you also aren't limited to just one. So if you're keeping the hard pace of an adventure racer, you might consider packing at least two recovery drink mixes per day and spread them out over the hours you'll be hiking. Avoid the caffeine part if you take your last one right before bed. And for those that like to hike after dinner, consider trying to make the dinner itself as close to a recovery mix as possible. In other words, look for meals that have an optimum ratio. Use the new nutritional columns and sort by Carb Pro to help find the ones you like. Then, have a dessert once you finally do stop and use the foods list to find the one that looks like a recovery. Now, apart from all the data upgrades and flavor changes, I also found a new brand of dried meals to add to the list. I was in REI, lurking in the food section, when I spotted spicy pork noodle in this flashy yellow pouch. It says each one is handmade in rural England using natural ingredients in their unique dehydration technology. Hopefully it tastes good. You may also have noted that I moved a few things out of the way, and this was to make all the columns from brand through protein run in the same order as they do in the foods chart. And that will make it easier on you when building menus, and you can just copy and paste foods from either the foods or the meals chart into one consistent list. To that end, I made a few functional changes to the chart. I moved the dried meals into the same spreadsheet with the hiker foods. They're now both in the one downloadable file, just on separate tabs. I also added a couple of planning tools. Adam Salinger asked me if I could make a fill-in-the-blanks list where foods and meals could be added by the user with a totals line at the bottom. And that way you can use it like a menu planner. Build a list of the day's foods, breakfast, trail snacks, lunch, recovery, dinner, dessert, you name it. Put everything you'll eat in a day into the list, and then see how it all totals up you'll be able to see at a glance some key metrics like your total calories and weight. You can also now see how your personal menus measure out in overall density. Make sure you're getting enough protein. Track your total sodium intake. In this example of what I might take, I manage an average density of 151 calories per ounce, which gives me just over 3,000 calories a day for just 20 ounces. Total protein looks good given the activity levels but my sodium for the day looks low. So realizing that informs me to make sure I bring electrolyte supplements, especially if it's gonna be hot. One note, remember that the foods and meals in the chart are based upon the nutrition label, which is always calibrated to one serving. So for many foods like nutrition bars, one serving is one bar. But for items sold in bulk packaging or the dried meals in particular, there might be multiple servings per container so if you eat the whole pouch like I do, the way to handle two servings is to enter it twice. And lastly, I'm able to make sure that from breakfast through trail snacks to recovery, my fuel ratio looks good also. Now, how's that, you say? I see some items there that are way outside the optimum range. Well, remember food combos? You can combine separate items into one snack by eating them together or roughly at the same time. So I added a combo calculator to help you find these pairings. It's basically a pack of mini menu planner charts, each with their own totals. If you've got a favorite food with a particularly low or high ratio, look for something else with the opposite. Plop them in the calculator and see how they figure as a couple. And with that in mind, you can see that those out of whack items in my sample menu are actually well balanced when considered in pairs. Now I'll put a link to download this new chart in the description below. And then last, but certainly not least, there was a reason that Jeff Blum wanted to expand the dried meals to include all the nutrition data on the label. He's taken the whole chart to another level. First, with the comparative data in place, he combined the hiker foods and the dried meals into a single massive list. And that list is a Google Sheet, available both on and offline. And he's also added the ability to mark favorites and build a shopping list that you can carry on your phone and use in remote markets even when there's no signal. He's got a post on his blog with instructions for use and a link to download his chart. 
So that's it for this update, folks. Like I said, it's going to have to be sort of a living document. So leave your comments here if you see things that need changing. I'll make a note and do periodic corrections without producing a video every time. I think I'll just leave the version date in the description box so you'll know. As always, I very much appreciate your time and thanks for watching.